Self-care is one of those buzz phrases you hear a lot these days. We're encouraged to guard our mental, physical, and emotional health regularly. But have you ever considered the impact your financial wellness may have on your life? Well, I have to tell you, a recent bank rate survey found some pretty startling results. They found that 52% of adults say that money negatively impacts their mental health. 29% said they worry about it daily. So when you consider that over half of us feel like our money situation is negatively impacting our health, and then you think about that stress that it creates, it also reminds us that, you know, the American Psychological Association has acknowledged a strong link between stress and physical health. So it's possible that our financial wellness could be impacting our health. And we've seen this firsthand when it comes to both ends of the spectrum. We have people that'll come in here. They're on a great financial journey. They're very sound. They built discipline and they light up when we start talking about these financial topics. And then we've also had those who've never used a budget and their first reaction is usually to cringe, which I'm sure was yours. I know it was mine. Um, But don't worry. We're not going to worry you about budgets again. I know we talk about it a lot. We're not going to worry you out about it. But we are going to give you three tips to practice self-care when it comes to your financial journey today on Talking Sense. So first thing we want to talk about is, again, self-care is often related to physical or emotional health. But let's be honest, our financial health, it's going to impact other things. I mean, if we don't even have the ability to take care of our day-to-day needs or we're struggling to do so, it's going to impact other things. So our first one is going to be, the, our first tip is going to be to protect yourself and your loved ones. When is the last time that you had a comprehensive insurance review? Let's just talk real for a minute. I know for me, when I joined Gym Wealth, I had some term life insurance and that was it. And I'll be, you know, with what I know now, I was absolutely underinsured. I'd never reviewed it. I just took what my car insurance agent at the time suggested I get and went with it. I didn't understand any sort of like reasoning behind it or what was the right amount. But it's not just about your life insurance, it's about every other coverage. There are a lot of changes happening in the insurance world this year. And if you're not taking the time to meet with someone and understand where your gaps may be, it could really hurt you. So let's, let's start with life insurance, though. If something happened and I didn't come home today, would the insurance I'm carrying right now be enough to provide income for the rest of my earning years to replace the work income that I can't bring in any longer? Would it take care of my children and my husband? Would it take care of any other things that matter to me? Because if it wouldn't, then it may not be enough. And on the flip side, we've also seen people who don't have the right policy or they, it doesn't do what they think it does. Um, you know, some people are, are what we call insurance poor. They're paying a ton of money for very little coverage. So it's important to review that regularly. What about your auto insurance? Do you have enough coverage? One of the areas that I've seen a lot of or I've heard a lot of um, insurance brokers talk about is underinsured motorist coverage. A lot of us will have the base And what you don't realize is if somebody hits you that doesn't have insurance, you could be on the line, your policy could be on the line to cover different expenses that otherwise would not have been on you. So making sure you have the right coverage, making sure that you have a deductible that you can afford. If you don't have a large amount in emergency savings, having a lower deductible may make sense because if you get into an accident and you need to get your car repaired, but you can't afford to, where are you going to be? The other one is your homeowner's policy. This is the area where I see the most kind of shakeup happening right now. If you're in central Arkansas like I am, you know there were a lot of crazy weather events over the last couple of years. We had a freeze that stuck around for several days and really wreaked havoc on a lot of people's homes with water damage. We had tornadoes rip right through central Arkansas, and we've got families still recovering. And as a result of that and some other events, hailstorms, some insurance brokers are are pulling out. They're not going to be insuring homes in Arkansas any longer. We've seen some change the way their coverages are going to cover things. And we talked about that in another episode recently. So making sure that you have enough coverage to rebuild your home in the event that you had a catastrophic loss. So if you got that coverage five years ago and you've just been renewing, 
then you know the cost of rebuilding your house has gone up dramatically with all of the inflation we've experienced. So sitting down and having a review with your insurance provider to make sure that your coverage would replace your home is very important. You also need to understand your deductible. If you don't, again, have a ton of emergency savings, you don't have enough emergency savings to cover a $2,500 deductible, then maybe it's worth it to pay more for the premium to have a lower deductible because if you are if you have hail damage or you have a leak in your roof, you don't want to have to delay getting that taken care of. Another thing that for me had never been on my radar really until recently when I had a driver and my insurance broker approached me about it was an umbrella policy. This type of policy is intended to cover other gaps. So, for instance, if you have a trampoline on your property, you do have a homeowner's policy that probably has some level of coverage, but an umbrella policy could pick up where that less leaves off if someone were to get injured on your property and then decide to sue, or if the medical expenses were higher. So, back to my driver. I have a teenage boy who's out there driving, and if he were to get in a wreck, that could be a substantial expense for our family. So, we have the umbrella policy there to fill the gap. So again, the first tip we've got for you is to make sure that you have appropriate protections in place for yourself and your loved ones. Because for me, it helps me sleep at night knowing that if something happened to me, my family would be okay. Tip number two. This one's not going to be fun, but I'm going to ask you to get organized. Let's start with beneficiaries. It, It is so common for people to come in to meet with someone on our team And as we're going through their documentation for their various accounts, whether it's employer plans, life insurance policies, they either don't have any beneficiaries or they only have a primary beneficiary. So if I have an account that I um, beneficiarize to my husband, but I don't have a contingent beneficiary, the gap there is if something happens to both of us at the same time, there's nobody named to receive those funds. So it's important to not just have a primary but a contingent beneficiary. And then also in that, to make sure that you're looking at it regularly, if life changes, you have kids, things like that, make sure you're updating it from time to time and verifying that it's exactly how you want it to be. Something a lot of people don't know you can do is you can also create beneficiaries on your bank accounts. That's called a payable on death designation. So if you've got a bank account, you can go there and fill out a little form, put beneficiaries on your bank account as well. That'll help it avoid probate, which we'll talk about another time. It's a hot mess. You want to avoid it. Another thing you can do is keep a file that has updated account information and passwords so that if something were to happen to you, the person who would need to take care of your assets or take care of your accounts could access them. In this digital world, there are a lot of digital options you can use for this. Um, If you're more old school, you can use a safety deposit box. Make sure you've got someone designated who can go get it if something happens to you. Um, But having all of that information in one place is really beneficial. Um, So like for me, when my mom passed away, we literally had to dig through thousands of papers, a bunch of different filing cabinets, just to figure out where mom had assets because there was not one organized platform to look that up. Also make sure your important documents are stored safely. So my husband and I created a trust recently. I say recently, it's been a few years. Um, What we did was we put a scanned copy of that in our file here at GenWealth so that if something were to happen to us, it's available even if it's not physically where someone can find it. Um, Make sure that you have permission to disclose if you're gonna use your financial advisor because they can't just give that information out unless you've given them permission to do that. Also, if you're married, Is your spouse on all of the titles and deeds? Because that can create chaos. I've seen it uh, in the case of a home where the, the husband passed away, it was unexpected, and the wife was not on the property. So she does not just automatically get to take over all the property. There are our rules to that. And on that note, estate planning is so, so critical for many of us. Um, whether you choose to do it or not, Having that conversation with an estate planning attorney to decide what you may or may not need, it's not going to hurt anything. Usually it's free, and they can help you decide if what you're trying to accomplish can be done through an estate plan or if there's another avenue for that. But a will, it's not necessarily going to take care of everything. 
uh, I think the way uh, someone put it to me that made sense to me is the will is for who gets grandma's china, but it's that's about all it's good for. That probate process, which if you don't know what it is, again, look into it, um, if it will still apply if you do just a will. Also, I've experienced it where the will was not completed according to state law, so it was moot. It did not matter what was on that paper. It was not handled properly. It was not signed properly. There were you know, things in it that don't abide by state law, so it just got thrown out. The key is you just want your wishes to be honored. And if you're, you've got kids, they want your wishes to be honored most likely too. But if you don't have it on paper, they can't help. And if you've done the estate planning, have you funded it? What that means is when you meet with the estate planning attorney, they're going to give you a list of homework items, different accounts that need to be titled a certain way or have different beneficiary designations. You've got to go and complete that homework before that trust is any good. Anything that's not inside that trust, which means it's not owned by the trust, is not going to be protected by the trust either. So it's really important that you take the time to go through that. And then make sure that the estate planning attorney is educating you. We, you know, we, we're pretty big on education here, right? We all know that. We expect that from our estate planning attorney partners as well. They need to be teaching you what's in that document because there's going to be a lot of language you don't understand but you need to at least understand what's going where and how. And if you have a child with special needs, listen up. Children who have special needs and are receiving services can be absolutely derailed in that process if they receive an inheritance. There are special needs trusts that can be established in your estate plan to protect your child from having to inherit those assets and throwing all their benefits off. So if you have a kid with special needs, I hope you listen to this one thing. Please, please, please do not let them inherit things directly. Create a special needs trust so that they can inherit it safely. And then the last tip, get comfortable doing hard things. Physical fitness takes a lot of work. So does financial fitness. Change is going to stretch you. It's going to take some effort at first. But as you build habits, it does become easier. I've seen that with so many of my clients. Some things you can do today. Create and stick to a budget. Begin creating emergency savings. Start with a goal of $2,000. That's going to cover most of those deductibles we talked about earlier. So that's a great place to start. But then work towards three to six months of, of your income needs. Participate in your employer plan. If you have access to one, make sure you're maximizing the match. Make sure you're getting every penny. And then get in the habit of increasing it every year by just 1%. Because over your lifetime, that'll add up. And then meet with a financial advisor to discuss your goals and to create a clear path for your financial journey. Your financial wellness has an impact on almost every other aspect of your wellness. Let's be real. It's hard to take care of yourself when you really can't afford to, right? So let's start there. Protect yourself and your family with appropriate insurance coverages Get organized so that your loved ones have the things they need if something were to happen, and then do the hard things. Make those daily decisions that are necessary to move you forward toward your goal. You can do this. I've seen so many people find success in financial wellness, in their financial journeys, by making intentional decisions. So I know you can do this, but you've got to believe you can do it first. So if that's where you need to start, start there. Give yourself a checkup. From the neck up, like my friend used to say. I know it's cheesy to say, but get your head right. And if something resonated with you today, decide now which of these items you want to start with. I, I do this a lot with you guys. I want you to pick one thing from this list that you say, okay, I could go get this check today. I can go have my insurance looked at by my insurance broker. We haven't looked at it in a while. I'm going to meet with them. Make the appointment today because delaying your wellness is not going to benefit you. So start today, pick something you want to work on, and get going on your journey because you deserve to be not just physically fit, emotionally fit, but also financially fit. And I know you can do it, so get going. Thank you guys so much for joining me on Talking Sense today. If you haven't already, please subscribe on YouTube, um, like, share this content with your friends, so we can reach more people because our goal is for everyone to have access to financial education. Have a great week.
Thanks for listening to Talking Sense. And if you like what you hear, make sure and subscribe to the podcast to get all the newest episodes. The Gym Wealth team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or by calling our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. And while we like to have fun here, we're also financial advisors and that means disclosures. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment and no strategy can assure success. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Independent Advisor Alliance. Independent Advisor Alliance and Gemwell Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial.